Normally, the first quarter of the gaming year is drier than Rich Hall on Tatooine with silica gel in his pockets. But we've been saved from the 2008 drought by the low-budget, low-cost arcade genre made possible by the moisture farm of online networks. Now, if anything is going to lead this rebellion to victory, it's going to be Geometry Wars Galaxies. I've been playing the DS version this week, and it's blowing my mind. The idea has been developed from the single endless level of the Xbox versions to a whole galaxy of systems and planets, each with a different game setting. These give you surprisingly different types of game, as you have to negotiate different enemy behaviours and concentrations and different grid layouts with some really cool stuff like moving blocks. Each level has different points targets which you need to hit to win medals, and may even have different numbers of lives and bombs. This gives a lot of variety to pace and strategy, and keeps the whole thing feeling really fresh. I can play for a lot longer on this than I can on Waves or Retro Evolved. You also have the addition of a helper drone. He starts off in attack mode, but you can buy other behaviours to take different tactical approaches on different planets. You can set him to defend, collect, snipe, sweep and more. And as you play each type, it levels up, getting more powerful. Yet another compelling reason to keep playing just one more round. Another great development is the geome system. Now, when you kill enemies, they deposit little chips or geomes, which you need to collect to boost your score multiplier, and which also act as cash so you can pay to unlock other planets and drone behaviours. This is a great addition. Collection is always incredibly compelling, and it gives a secondary objective to your movement, which will sometimes conflict with avoiding or hunting enemies, and can make the whole thing so much more dangerous. And as well as the Galaxies campaign, you also get a full port of Retro Evolved, and a host of co-op and versus multiplayer options. Now, my big worry for this game was the graphics and the small screen. I hadn't expected it to scale down at all well, but the developers have done a fantastic job. It still looks pretty good, but the colour is not as intense as the Xbox versions, and there have been a few concessions such as the downplaying of the background star field, the warping grid and your engine trails, but all this means you can actually see what's going on and play for more than 10 minutes without your eyes bleeding. There are still lots of enemies, including some new designs, and gameplay is still very intense. The controls also need a mention. The default setup has the game in the top screen, the stylus controlling guns from the touch screen, with your smart bomb mapped to the left bumper and the D-pad for movement. This works really well, although my left hand got a little crampy and would have marginally preferred an analogue stick after about half an hour. Shooting is more difficult to make accurate than it is with the 360 controller, but it quickly becomes intuitive and things like sweeps and sudden changes of angle are much easier with the stylus. The settings can all be switched around and you can even make the touch screen the active display. So all in all, a fantastic game with a completely different feel and pace from anything else out there on the DS at the moment. Absolutely a modern classic and no DS fans collection should be without it. Seriously, this has earned a permanent place in my DS carry case and is without question a 5 star game. And don't forget, if you're lucky enough to own both a DS and a Wii, you can link the two together to unlock some extra content. See you next time.